Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me better. Today, I would like to present you um, the experiments which we are doing in Norway, in Dresden, to give you an impression what is, uh, what is important, how fluid dynamics is important for the real batteries. What I present, this is mostly from other people, of course. I will give you an overview about only sodium zinc batteries. I will explain you how they work, how they are set up, explain you the practical challenges in the experiments, and then come to fluid dynamics. Two years ago, we have been super lucky because we got a large European Horizon 20 project on sodium zinc batteries. And in fact, the aim is to, uh, to build such batteries which operate at 600 degrees. And this project is now running for already one and a half years. So three years are still left. <coughs> we have been really lucky because we tried to get such a project four times. So in, in the end, we have been, we got it, but there were three proposals, founding of 45, so it was really difficult. So we can be lucky now, we are really lucky, but on the other hand, this means also in three years, we need to deliver a battery, a demonstrator, something what works, because otherwise it will be very difficult to continue battery research if you do not have a battery. <coughs> and maybe to present the people, Camilla, maybe you can, Camilla is doing the electrochemical work, is building the batteries. Then Omar and Caroline, yeah, they are doing the modeling. Ian just returned, he's calculating the prices. Whom did I miss? Martins is doing neutron imaging. Whom else did I miss? William will join us as well soon in February, also working on the neutron imaging. And then the most important, Andrea from Politecnico de Torino, he's developing the feed through, the sealing, the joining, what is really challenging. A device what is very similar to our batteries is a sodium production device, so down cell. And this basically, has two <coughs> electrodes, is filled with a molten salt, works again at 600 degrees, and this salt contains, of course, sodium chloride, calcium chloride, and barium chloride. So this is exactly the same salt as we are using. And when you operate such a cell, you produce here molten sodium, but also chlorine gas. And of course, this process you cannot reverse, but somehow, because somehow you would need to get the gas then inside the sodium. But what you can do, you can bind this chlorine gas to another metal. And there we simply choose zinc because uh, zinc is very cheap. So the price, if you look only on sodium and zinc, could be four euro per kilowatt hour. And this is really, really perfect. Of course, the price is not the only important thing. The second most important thing is the availability. Sodium, you find everywhere as table salt, but zinc is also very well available in the European Union. So they are really sufficiently available and this was very important to get this European project. And thirdly, what is also nice, the cell voltage with around two volts, this is much higher than for most of the other liquid metal batteries. <coughs> How does such a cell work? On the bottom you have zinc, on the top sodium, and then when you discharge it, the metal goes always downwards. And this means the sodium goes into the salt, forms sodium chloride, and at the same time, the zinc chloride is decomposed and forms zinc. And this means when Camilla builds such a battery, she will put inside zinc, sodium chloride, and calcium chloride. So no sodium, no zinc chloride, because they are difficult to handle. And then we, when you charge the battery, you, you form the sodium. And what I would like to mention here, very important, we are always speaking about liquid metal batteries, but all the other batteries are different because the other liquid metal batteries, these are concentration cells. You have two metals, lithium bismuth, and you mix them, and this gives you voltage. Here it's different, we do not mix sodium and zinc, it's that sodium goes in the, in the salt, 
and another metal goes out of the salt. This is important because this gives this higher cell voltage. <coughs> the voltage is good. What is not so good is that we have this self-discharge. And self-discharge means when you charge the battery, you're producing zinc chloride here at this interface. But the zinc chloride, unfortunately, does not stay there, but it diffuses upwards, clack, clack, clack. And when it reaches the sodium, it decomposes, and we form then, due to self-discharge, zinc here on the top. And we do not want zinc on the top, so we need to limit this mass transfer of zinc chloride. And how do we do it? We simply split the salt into two separate chambers by putting here a diaphragm, and this is simply a ceramic with many holes, which avoids that you can have fluid flow which mixes all the salt. It's some kind of diffusion barrier. Here you can see Martin's baby cell, which he will use in three weeks for neutron imaging. And in fact, what we use here as crucible is classic carbon, very corrosion resistant, where you put the zinc inside the salt and so on. And in order that the sodium here on the top does not touch the walls, he uses a ceramic cylinder which goes inside. Then all that goes into a second ceramic, and this is simply done that you do not have an electro -compact, electrical contact with the housing to avoid any electrochemical corrosion. <coughs> the contact to this classic carbon comes from this spring, and the spring is then connected with that feed-through where you simply apply the cable. Sodium is formed here at this nickel cylinder, which goes then here up through this feed-through. <coughs> and of these cells, I would say during the last half a year, Martins built more than 10, and one cell operated already for one day. But the thing is, the design is not yet optimized, so they usually the ceiling fails, or we have a lot of corrosion here. So there's still something to do. <coughs> this is Camilla's cell. The last one I didn't mention is really small, no? one centimeter in diameter. And Camilla makes it much, la much larger, so this is the demonstrator we want to build, and this is simply something like 10 centimeters in diameter, and I would expect that when it within the next three years, we won't go much larger. And here the status is that the design is already finished, and the parts are ordered, and I would expect within the na next half year, the cells will be built and operated. <coughs> Cell parts are very important, and they are not only important for the um, experimental people, but also for fluid dynamics. If you imagine this here is this diaphragm, what we put in the middle of the salt in order to avoid mixing, you see when the current needs to go through these small pores, the path gets very long. This makes a higher resistance. If the current is coming out here of such a small hole, and then you have a lot of salt below, will we get electro vortex flow there near to these small holes? We don't know. So all these things are for, yeah, for the experiments, they are very important, I would say. <coughs> the current collector, we could use this metal foam, we could use such small sticks, and depending what current collector we use, of course the current distribution in the battery will be totally different. And what's important here to mention, this current collector will always be in touch with the salt, so we do not expect that we have there one centimeter of sodium free flowing Really, the current collector is touching the salt, and this changes, then the current distribution changes the flow, and so on. <coughs> Material properties, I made this table very fast, but three things are important. Viscosity, if you have a lot of zinc chloride, it gets very viscous. So this is in the charged battery, the lower layer. Second, the salt composition is changing all the time, so also the electrical resistance will change very much. So it will already be very difficult with a, with a one-dimensional model to, um, to model the cell voltage because the conductivity is changing all time. And then thirdly, not important for simulation, but for the experiments, the vapor pressure is very high of sodium, of zinc, of zinc chloride. And this means basically if you operate an open cell, everything will evaporate very fast. So we really need to seal it well, especially if we would like to do long-time experiments. I have four challenges. The first one are the materials. So this is an example from Mart Martin's battery. A few hours, the salt was going up in this classic carbon crucible, 
when it touches the string, it fails very fast. So we need something what works with sodium, something what works with zinc, and something that works with a salt. For sodium, it's quite easy because sodium does not attack metals, no? Ceramics, it does attack, but you find some like aluminum oxide what works. For zinc, then, it becomes already very difficult. Zinc is very nice to all ceramics, but it attacks and dissolves metals. So we have for the moment only molybdenum, classic carbon, titanium, which might work. When we go to the molten salt, the most important thing is that we have a lot of nickel inside to make the metal corrosion resistant. And this means overall, we have solutions, but they are sometimes expensive. And you can imagine springs you can buy, but you cannot buy them easily with out of nickel-based alloys. So it's not always easy to get the parts in the right shape of the right material, or it takes very long. Challenge two is joining. You see, all the housing is a positive electrode, but we need to get the current for the negative electrode somehow inside, and we need to insulate housing with this wire with some ceramic. So you need to join ceramic with metal, and there the difficult thing is that they have a different expansion coefficient. So the easiest is take simply aluminum oxide, which expands a lot, with mild steel, which does not expand too much, you can join them, but unfortunately this is the worst combination for corrosion. For corrosion, the best would be aluminum nitride and something like Hestaloy, but this is super difficult to join. So our corrosion people and the joining people, it is conflicting to find a solution what everyone likes. And Martin's tried a lot these commercial feed throughs but you see they usually fail at this high temperature. And Andrea and colleagues, they, uh, they are developing so now something custom made for us. Challenge three, the electrolyte. For the electrolyte, the most important thing is a high conductivity, so you take sodium chloride. But sodium chloride melts at 800 degrees, we need 600, so we need to add something. What can we add? We can add all these chlorides, because they do not react with metallic sodium. So what do we take? We take the cheapest, we add calcium. But if we add calcium and cycle such a battery, we produce calcium instead of sodium. And this is not good because it is solid. So what will we take then? The third cheapest would be barium and strontium. And then we have already three, four components and this makes everything very complex because yeah, this is really a multi-dimensional optimization and this is a lot of experimental work which you cannot always predict before. And now I come to, for the, to the interesting part for you, flow and mass transport. This is also a challenge basically for two reasons. Flow is very beneficial because if we have flow, if we have mixing, we can reach very high currents and we can decrease the resistance. On the other hand, flow can be negative if we mix the complete salt because then we have a lot of self-discharge. And what is important today, in the past we were interested in mixing the lower metal. This is now totally unimportant. Now we are looking only on the electrolyte. We want to mix the electrolyte or we would like to understand what happens inside the electrolyte. <coughs> And here I have an example of what happens if we have no convection, if we have no flow in electrolytes. There's a nice paper from Ballet 40 years ago. And what they did was simply, they took a molten salt, lithium chloride, potassium chloride, they mixed it with ceramic powder, they melted it, heated it, they applied current between two electrodes, four minutes, some ampere, and then they suddenly cooled it down. Cut this electrolyte and looked on the concentration profile. Potassium chloride, and you see here, this is the mean volume, how it goes up. You have really variations in the concentration up to 60%. This is a lot. And what can happen if we have such gradients? The electrolyte can simply solidify. Then it's not conducting anymore. The conductivity may change. It might also happen if you have many different mm, uh, 
are different ions in the electrolyte, then you start then to deposit another one that you do not produce sodium, but calcium or barium instead. So this is really important. Carolina, she modeled this experiment and then modeled also a battery, the lithium bas uh, silicium bismuth battery with the same electrolyte. And what she did, she had her battery and she varied simply the current density and observed then, then the cell potential. And what is here important with this diagram, two things. The first one is at 175 milliampere per square centimeter, the cell stopped to operate. And at least the electrochemists, they know such a current density, this is nothing. No? In reality, the current density, what we observe in the experiments is 10 times more. And this means obviously there must be flow in this electrolyte in reality. But we do not know exactly which kind of flow. Maybe you remember in Tom's talk, he, show, he showed if the electrolyte is five, five millimeter thick, there won't be thermal convection, so it must be something else. And the second important thing, this is very theoretically and might not be super exact, but you can see that the concentration losses in the electrolyte, they can be large compared to the ohmic losses. So this might really be important. If you have no flow in the electrolyte, you can have a lot of over potentials. <coughs> we heard a lot already about thermal convection. How will it be in our batteries? We made some fast calculations and we can see in the small cell what Martins is working on and also in the large one what Camilla is developing, we will have thermal convection. And the simple reason is our electrolyte is now much thicker. No? In the past we always said five millimeters, now we say two centimeters and the reason is simply now we store the energy in the salt so we need more salt. Another important thing here in the small battery, one centimeter in diameter, the temperature differences will be 0 0.4 or 0 0.3 Kelvin. This is nothing. No? If you have a furnace at 600 degrees, the temperature gradient inside here will be much, much larger than the temperature you generate by the electric current. <coughs> and also if you have um, thin current collectors on the top, like a small finger which goes inside, it's always touching the salt then the current will go directly down. You have lateral current, uh, lateral temperature gradients which immediately drive thermal convection. Electrovortex flow. Camilla has a super nice oven where you can look inside at 600 degrees and she did some experiments. This is a salt, this is a current collector. She produced sodium. sodium. The, the sodium, sodium is of course produced here on the bottom, a small droplet, it goes up and then it collects here on the side. And again, the current is going directly up. So I would expect no electrovortex flow. <coughs> what happens if we now discharge? The reaction takes place here at this line where sodium touches the electrolyte. Then I would expect most of the current appears here and we will get very strong electrovortex flow. And this means altogether electrovortex flow depends a lot on the setup, on the exact shape of the current collector. And it can change between charge and discharge. Solitol and double diffusive convection. Carolina made some first estimates. As I said to you before, now we are interested in the salt. And in fact, what happens, or what is important to know, the density. Sodium chloride is the lightest, calcium chloride a little bit heavier, and then we have zinc chloride even more heavier. So we expect at discharge that we get solid, solid flow in the lower layer and a charge in the upper layer. Then we thought about, solid, um, about double diffusive convection. Solid, solid convection means you get plumes, mushrooms, and double diffusive convection could mean that you get finger convection like you see here, long and thin. If you want such something like that, you need two diffusing quantities. So you need a, t a stable temperature distribution and you need unstable concentration. And both need to be in, in, the, in a correct relation and the relation you can basically calculate by the thermal Rayleigh number, solute Rayleigh number. And if both are more or less equal, 
then you are here in this very dark area where you get double diffusive convection, where you expect it. But there are two papers which say if you have a little, if you have very high solute Rayleigh numbers here or there, then you still can get fingers. And we tried it in the past. We tried lithium seven. Here's a metal. We didn't find it, no. But now with this sodium zinc battery, looking on the electrolyte, we are coming nearer to this finger region, and we are confident maybe there's something, but we didn't check it. <coughs> Doug and Tom, they wrote a nice paper about fluid dynamics, an overview paper, and they checked it, and it has been cited only three times by someone who built a battery. And this was, I was unhappy, I asked Camilla why, and Camilla said, we have in the experiment so many problems Fluid dynamics is simply not the most important thing, but I would say now, now we are not doing only electrochemistry, we are really looking on the battery design. Both Camilla and her group in Norway and also Martin, so I think we are now at the point where we um, can bring simulation theory and experiment together. And it will also be for us very helpful, no? If Let's say if someone can model exactly our battery because the resources are limited. I would, what I would like to stress at the end, sodium zinc, there the electrolyte is really the area of interest. Second, the exact cell design is super important. And finally, uh, we would like to cooperate with you together. We don't know exactly how we can do it best. We we thought we could set up an email list where we distribute, for example, some new phenomena which we observe where fluid dynamics, we know that it's important, but we have no time to investigate it deeply. We can share our battery design. For us, it would already be super, super good if someone has Comsoil, for example, and can model the current distribution in the battery because this helps us a lot. And these batteries um, I have shown at the beginning, they are just built now, so within the next half a year, I would say, or within the next year, and we still can make modifications of the current collectors of the setup. If anyone has an idea, so we are very happy to work together. We don't know how, but yesterday we thought maybe the best would be if Martin Sarna, who you can see here with his poster, um, he, um, he said he would be able to coordinate, let's say, between experiments and modeling. So if someone is interested to work together, then please contact Martins. Thank you. Okay, does anyone have any questions for Norbert? Okay, here. Thank you for that. Um, on the uh, simulation, I think it was slide 16, um, was the um, conductivity of the electrolyte, is that a function of um, uh, concentration or is it a constant in the simulations, do you know? It changes, I would say. Okay. I would I'm say I'm the mean value was always constant or am I wrong? Or oh, it changes very slightly, but it changes locally. Because I'm just curious, because the, on the on the at the very highest current there, it, is is that bottom gray section labeled ohmic? Is that ohmic losses? So that I, I'm just curious about whether you think that if you if you introduce mixing, will that help reduce ohmic losses? Or like, will that will that big over potential remain even if you introduce mixing? if that makes sense. I would say the ohmic over potential here, this will not change. It does not depend on mixing, but concentration over potential in the electrolyte and in the positive electrode, this depends of course very much on mixing. 
But yeah, that, that makes sense. It's just because it's it, at the highest current, it's growing very quickly as well there. Uh, and so if you go to, you know, because you, you're saying that that's 10 times, you expect that 10 times higher current should be possible. We are not super sure with this area. I'm sorry, this might be, this was really hard to get it converged. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Ian Staffel from Imperial College. Um, in a past life, before I pretended to be an economist, um, I worked on high temperature fuel cells. And uh, yeah, one of the big problems we faced was trying to find ways to attach metals to ceramics when they're gonna operate at a thousand degrees in a highly reducing atmosphere. And I just wondered, is there any is there any learning uh, that can come from the ceramic fuel cells community and the research they've produced uh, that would help with this problem? Or are the, um, the chemicals, you know, the environment that you're using and the specific materials sufficiently different that there is, there is no learning that can come? Andrea, would you like to answer or should I? I think in, in my uh, really short experience <laughs> um, that um, we, in, in our group, also we uh, work on fuel cells. And so um, part of the experience in that field, it's really useful. Um, the main problem, I think, is it's the um, big difference in the environment and in the corrosion is uh, as <laughs> Norbert said uh, before is, is the main issue because of the uh, choice of the materials and not, not only uh, um, on the side of raising materials but also the uh, for example fuel cells uh, usually uh, from my experience uh, for example copper is uh, a, a metal Counterpart, it's it's really uh, it's commonly used, but in our case, it's it's not uh, possible to use it. So I hope to answer. <laughs> okay. Any further questions? I think that's it. So thank you very much, Norbert. Thank you.